name is Drew and I'm the Aspiring Master and welcome to the Aspiring Master Presents. This is a show where we talk about the meanings, misunderstandings and insights about the important words we use and misuse on a daily basis. Really understanding what we're truly meaning when we talk allows us to convey and explain ourselves better to others. This not only allows us clearer communication so we can get what we need quicker and with less stress, but also helps us understand ourselves with more depth than we thought possible. Today, I would like to welcome back my wife, Talia Wilson, with whom I will be discussing and maybe redefining Merriam-Webster's word of the year, gaslight. Let's get going. Well, welcome to the show, Talia Wilson, my lovely wife. Ah, looking more and more gorgeous every day. I'm going to get my licks in as we start so that uh, when I throw you under the bus later, it will be <laughs> that much more surprising. It's just uh, inevitable at this point, isn't it? Exactly. Like, really. Uh Oh, the joys of marriage. Exactly. So today we're going to be talking about gaslighting. Now, and, and gaslight is the Merriam-Webster's word of the year for 2022. So let's get into that. So as usual, let's go over to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, our faithful Merriam-Webster dictionary, mm -hmm. and look at what their idea of gaslighting is. So, so gaslight in Merriam-Webster. The first definition is to psychologically manipulate a person, usually, over an extended period of time so that the victim questions the validity of their own thoughts, perception of reality, or memories and experiences. Confusion, loss of confidence, and self-esteem, and doubts concerning their own emotional or mental stability. To subject someone to gaslighting, is what it says. And that was the first one. Uh, second one is to grossly mislead or deceive someone, especially for one's own advantage. And I think, yeah. I, I think, think that's that, more of what Mary Webster was kind of looking at when they made gaslight the word, the of, word the of the year. Yeah. yeah. So grossly mislead or deceive someone, mm -hmm. especially for one's own advantage. Yeah. Um, and and I agree with what they're talking about. And of course, this comes from the movie Gaslight. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. From the nineteen does. what was it nineteen thirties or nineteen forties nineteen forties. And it was about somebody being um, psychologically deceived by her husband at the time. Yeah, and the term was he'd go upstairs into the attic and do some stuff she didn't know about. Of course, she didn't know he was in the attic, but every, when he was up there, the gas would go down. So the light would dim, yeah. and she'd ask him, and, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. You're just imagining it and all this stuff. And by the end of the movie, you know, He's about to put her in a mental institution because she's starting to catch on to what he was doing. But very, if you haven't seen it, very, very good movie. Ingrid oh, yeah. Bergman yeah. deserved her Oscar for that because she was freaking amazing. And uh, for those people that don't uh, like black and white movies, you <laughs> should start to learn to because there are some really, really good acting in yeah. those movies. And, and fans of Murder, She Wrote, there's a very young Angela Lansbury in it. Oh, very And young. she plays a kind of a creepy character, so it, it's cool. Okay, so um, gaslighting, to grossly mislead or deceive someone, especially for one's own advantage. Yes. Um, when we're talking about gaslighting, and I, I guess what we need to do is really like define it for ourselves. What like is gaslighting just lying? Is gaslighting just uh, uh, deceiving for one's own ends? Well, I mean, it is a form of lying, but I think it's kind of lying. Okay excuse the term lying plus you right. know it's like taken to the nth degree of not just oh i'm lying to somebody but i'm lying to them in such a way that they start to either question their own existence or you know question you know constantly questioning what's going on around them you know well okay so um now here's the thing i i think that uh, to grossly mislead and when when we look at mislead we go grossly mislead so what is what does grossly mean so <laughs> let's go over to grossly uh grossly, grossly well i would think grossly mislead you're getting into the realm of you know the fake news and politicians and even to the point of like medical gaslighting you know mm -hmm. the whole oh it's all in your head you know well, uh, so Mary Moster says grossly, glaringly noticeable, usually because of inex inexcusable badness or object objectionableness. Uh, object yeah. I didn't even know that was a word. Apparently, objectionableness is a word. <laughs> um, 
Thanks, so, very Webster. <laughs> glaringly noticeable. So, I mean, here's the thing. It, I've heard people throw around gaslighting. Mm. Uh, oh, you're just trying to gaslight me, <sighs> right? Like, I mean, just this yeah. huge overuse of this word. And I think that grossly is what we really need to focus on in this word. So when I'm, if I say I'm being gaslit, it's somebody is really making me question my own mental faculties to the point of I don't even believe myself anymore. Right. Well, I mean, one of the main uses of it in this, you know, obviously where it came from in the movie is it's used in abusive relationships. You right. Know, the abuser, you know, constantly gas lights the person. Oh, what's all in your head? I don't know what you're talking about. You're just, you know, going, you, you know, you're assuming something that isn't true. You know, we've all heard those kind of comments, you know. Right. You're making a mountain out of a molehill, you know, type of thing. Well, I and okay. Now, having said that, I mean, each situation is a situation. I mean, let's let's take a look at we know <laughs> we know that there uh. there are people out there that um, will like gaslight us in the in the level of I'm just going to throw out a bunch of misinformation mm -hmm. and we gobble it up like we're children yeah. because we yeah. believe everything that's on the Internet. Um, <laughs> and yeah. uh, I mean, hey, do, believe this, though. Like, I mean, this is really good. It's on the internet, but it's really good. Um, but <laughs> Yeah, we, he's not trying to gaslight you much. Exactly, much. Um, but it's like, I, I take a look at some of the gaslighting that goes on, like literally on the internet, mm -hmm. are uh, little nuggets of truth. So I would say, uh, you know, conspiracy theories, there's some nuggets of truth in those. Like, does the government deceive us? Um, right. Yes, of course it does. Um, to a great degree, uh, the government will deceive us, not necessarily for its own ends, but for the for the better of the populace. I mean, we look at national security. Um, right. If we right. let out all the things that we're doing on a national security level, other governments that would like to undermine our government will use those things. And so there's there's that. But there's lots of people out there that go, oh, the government's deceiving us. And so therefore, this is real. Um, and. And that's kind of more of along the lines of taking this little grain of truth and because it's believable, of course it's believable <laughs> because it's true, right. um, and and then just expanding on it and and then making you question your reality in that sense. So I think that um, massive conspiracy theories and especially ones that if you did any real digging or research into, you could find that they were incorrect um, would be a form of gaslighting. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, the, you know, oh, the government's lying to you. Yeah, we know that. They've always, the government has always lied, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, like, that's going to stop. Same with, the, you know, prescription drug companies. You know there's a cure for cancer out there, a cure for AIDS, a cure for COVID, you know, I mean, whatever. Okay, well, I, I'm going to stop you there. First off, we don't know, right? Well, like, we really don't. I mean, it's like... Do we believe there might be? And again, this is the level of conspiracy that we're talking about. I can't say for sure that okay. that's... I can say in all probability there there may be, and it may be hidden because okay. we know that people are profiteering well, and yeah. so on. Okay. We know about the whole profiteering thing. I mean, look back to when you invented the little um, bead doohickey for your spray bottles. Mm -hmm. And of course... What was it S.E. Johnson or Johnson & Johnson or somebody already owns the patent for that. Right. You know, they've okay, already so patented it. So when she's, when she's talking as about much this. as you wanted to, oh, look, I invented this cool product. Yeah, you can never release it because they already own the patent, even though they themselves don't use it. You can't tell me that the drug companies don't do the same thing. Well, I mean, and the truth is, is no, I can't tell you that they do or they don't. I don't have any proof either way. I can say... <sighs> Well, I mean, that's the truth, right? Like, I mean, we have to, when we're taking a look at, and this, this goes into a, a little bit deeper on the gaslighting thing, this mm -hmm. goes into, well, yeah, that's great. We can surmise that these things are happening, but we don't know. And so no. therefore, if we jump to those conclusions and then we start preaching them, like say on a show like this, that they are reality, the truth is 
they're not reality. These are just um, ideas based on some of the facts that we we know are true. People are greedy. Uh, corporations can be greedy. You know, yeah. all of those things. So we see all of that, and then we surmise that there is. But the truth is, is we don't know. The the little beaded thing that Talia was talking about there is just a, I I developed a. a bottle that you can do almost 180 degrees both ways and still keep spraying no matter how much liquid you have in the bottom of it and it's got a little bead and a little little thing that goes down to the liquid and I looked it up and yeah sure enough Johnson Johnson has the patents to all of those uh, they bought up all the patents and uh, they're not using them because they understand that if you have this much liquid left in your bottle and every time you face it down and you squirt, it goes, yang, 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 you're going to just throw that away and buy another bottle, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you're just going, oh, screw that. So, you know, every little couple of cents, they make uh, that many more millions of dollars a year. Yep. So we can say that, yes, in the past, companies have done that and <laughs> Based on that, we can surmise that companies are probably still doing that. And so pharmaceutical companies, all of that stuff, may have a cure for cancer that they're burying. It's absolutely possible. We don't know. No, so I can't say that. I didn't it as say that I know. I'm just yeah. saying I, I was speaking in generality. Yeah, you know. Of course. If they're I, lying to us about one thing, it's not a stretch to say they're lying to us about about lots other of things. stuff. But but there's you know, the and and some conspiracy theories, yes, are grounded in some form, some of them are granted in truth. They may be half truths, may not be complete truths, but I mean, you look at the movie conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. the guy coming up with all this stuff and then all of a sudden he puts his newsletter out and the CIA tries to kidnap him because I was wrong. I was wrong. No, what, what was I right about? You know, yeah, exactly. that, that NASA was trying to kill the president by, you know, putting the shuttle in space and it was triggering an earthquake along a certain fault line or something like that. Anyways. Right. But yeah. So, I mean, it's not to say that all conspiracy theories are bad. All are, you know, false. There is some, usually some form of truth in it. Mm -hmm. I guess even if it's not like, okay, this is going to, I'm splitting hairs here. Factual truth. It could be a personal truth. I, my point for what I was saying was that conspiracy theories start with those summations mm -hmm. and then we just put more and more that make yeah, more yeah, yeah. sense to us, right? And it's, yeah. it's like, yeah, let's stick to the facts that we got and try and figure them out from there. Right. We all have our own personal beliefs, so that's all good. Yeah. Um, so when we're talking about conspiracy theories, um, gaslighting could be that. Why? Part of, part of why, because... Um, the reason why they chose gaslighting as the top word of the year is for the entirety of 2020, it was in the top 50 words searched on Merriam-Webster's website. Ah. And a lot of it, um, I think with the pandemic, we saw people more getting an understanding of medical gaslighting. Right. You know. Okay. You know, well, let's, let's talk about medical gaslighting. What do you, what do you, what is that? <laughs> Well, I know I've certainly experienced it a lot. I'm pulling the female card here. A lot of women have because, you know, oh, I don't feel good or I feel sick or everything. And usually, oh, it's all in your head or you must be pregnant. I don't know how many times I got that one going to the eMERGE, you know, for a UTI. And the guy's like, yo, you've got to be pregnant. Uh, no, I'm not really. I know what a UTI feels like, you know, that kind of thing. You know, where you, mm -hmm. even if you know what is wrong with you and they still won't believe you because, oh, I'm a doctor, you're a patient, therefore I know more than you. And, you know, even though you have to live with your body day in and day out, you still don't know what's going on. And for, for those people that don't know what a UTI is, a UTI is a urinary tract infection. Yeah. <laughs> College was a blast. <laughs> um. Well, and I mean, yeah, there is that. There's medical gaslighting. And mm -hmm. definitely there's there's doctors out there. I've run into doctors as well that go, oh, it's this. Uh, fine. Take two to aspirin. Call me in the morning. Yeah. Um, and part of that is uh, the doctors. I've, I've run into doctors that are not willing to admit that they don't know something. Um, uh, and or they're tired and they just want to get rid of you. Or, <laughs> you know, it's like there's... Yeah. There's lots of reasons for that. And medical gaslighting, I think that you're right. It happens more to women than it does yeah. to guys. Um, 
because with, you know, well, you're a woman, you're hysterical. I mean, well, you think and of also things and it's all psychological. Women, and, especially as they approach middle age, not all women, but a lot, you know, gain weight and, you know, everything gets put in that corner. You know, it's like, you know, I go to the knee doctor now, they would just say, oh, you need to lose weight, your knees will be better. It's like, no, they wouldn't. I've had a birth defect since, you know, my entire life. It's like, when I was skinny, when I was a kid, it's like, you can't tell me that being a, you know, being pole kid, I wasn't having problems, you know? So, I mean, right. I think, I think a lot of women, you know, as they get reached to a certain age, get a lot of that because, you know, their bodies are changing as they're going into menopause and, you know, rather than try to understand the whole of that, I think doctors are just get really dismissive. Right. You know? Well, I think that, uh, I think that you're right. I or everything that, uh, gets blamed on menopause when there well, actually is a problem. And or gets blamed on the fact that it's that time of month or, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it's like, I mean, it's, and I, I have to say, and then this is a stereotype that maybe we need to really take a look at and get over sure. is um, because men and women find different things in their lives important, right? <laughs> um, it's true, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. you and I run into that all the time. Um, yeah. It's because, you know, like the guy thinks that's kind of irrelevant or why are you complaining about your pain? Just suck it up because that's what guys are taught to do. Um, if we could it, undo the whole man up. Yeah. Indoctrination that you guys were all taught, you guys would be a lot happier. I'm sorry. Well, you know, I, I agree. And I, I don't think you need to prove that you're a man by sucking it up and not acknowledging your pain no i think you're more of a man if you do acknowledge your pain acknowledge that you're hurting acknowledge when you're sad and it's okay to cry i don't think right. that makes a guy i mean you're still a man what why the hell would you be in pain it wouldn't change that right you know well i mean and and that's I that's think, the whole stereotype i don't well, get it's like well, no. seriously well, so you let's know. let's equate that. Let's take a look at gaslighting to stereotyping and how they interconnect. Yeah. Right. So, like, I mean, if you say uh, women are stereotypically uh, a little bit more hysterical and they're <laughs> they're worried about things more than guys and da da da, you get a doctor that's looking at that um, mm -hmm. from that perspective, from yeah. that masculine perspective of stereotyping and then that from there they say oh well it's just this because they're re referring to a stereotype and on a certain level would that be considered gaslighting what they're not doing it on purpose really no i mean there is that gap between when a woman has a male doctor and the man will never know what it's like to have a period or to give birth or to understand you know certain pains for parts that he doesn't have you know Right. But at the same time, I've had male and female doctors when it comes to dealing with some of that stuff, feminine stuff particularly. I prefer the male doctor. They have a way better bedside manner. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just my experience. And I've had really great doctors and I really have. I've been really lucky in that area. But at the same time, just because a guy can't understand what it's like to physically be a woman doesn't mean... You can at least, I don't want to say empathize, but at least right. make well, an I mean, effort to again, understand. So, but, but I think that we, we get, when going back to gaslighting, do we really, ha we have to define it a little bit more than yeah. that. We have to yeah, define it that, that we knowingly are doing something because I don't think that a doctor saying, oh, it's all in your head, all of that stuff. I don't necessarily say that is gaslighting. I think that that is uh, shoving off responsibility. I think that there's a whole bunch of stuff involved in that, but I don't think yeah. it's gaslighting unless, unless the doctor is specifically doing it to you to make you not have confidence in yourself. There is forethought behind it. I right? suppose, but I mean, there's been times when I've gone to the doctor and especially when I've had to go to Emerge or like a clinic, and you see the eye roll, you see it happen, the whole, why are you here wasting my time? You right. know, and it's like, one, I either couldn't get into my regular doctor or I don't have a regular doctor and something's wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, I, having dealt with chronic pain my entire life, it's like, I try not to make a big deal about stuff. 
because it's important, you know? It's right. like the whole it's like the whole arrhythmia thing, you know. Just because I have chest pains, no one's taking it serious. I don't have chest pains, no one's taking it seriously. When yeah, that doesn't mean my heart's still not beating off rhythm at times, you right. know. But I'm I, I think that because they're taught these conditions, these diseases, these whatever's have these certain boxes that they check. If they don't check all of them or don't check most of them, they're kind of like, well, this can't be that then. It's probably this. Right. You know, so I think, I don't think it's entirely intentional. I mean, I know some doctors, yes, especially if you go to emerge in the middle of the night, they're tired. They probably don't want to be there. They're overworked. Yeah, they probably get a little PO'd if you come in um, with, you know, not a vis an invisible injury and they don't really know how to deal with you. I don't know if that's really gaslighting, though. Yeah, but that, I think that... I mean, that it feels we... like it at the time, because you feel like you're, val you're valid, you're valid, because your concerns are valid. You feel like you're not being heard. Well, I think that... Let's let's go back. Let's yeah. go back to this, uh, this definition. To grossly mislead or deceive someone, especially for one's own advantage. advantage. Um, so, when we're looking at that, and we talk about medical gaslighting... I'm sure that there's medical gaslighting out there, oh, but I don't absolutely. think, I think that people are misconstruing misinformation, possibly, or even, uh, you know, honest stereotyping, because uh, despite the fact that the stereotyping is out there, yeah. it is stereotyping, it's not gaslighting. Like if I was, and let's give me an example, okay? So oh. if I was a doctor and I knew... Um, you had a birth defect, right, uh, in your knees, mm -hmm. and I and I just going, I just kept telling you, oh, it's all your weight, <clears throat> it's all in your head, it's all, in order to get you to believe something that I wanted you to believe for my own advantage, which means that you just keep coming back or whatever, whatever it is that I have for my own advantage. So when we're taking a look at medical gaslighting, right. I don't think that what they're calling medical gaslighting is really gaslighting. I think it's medical deception. Yeah, it could also be that they just don't know what to do. Right, they, they, they don't if, know. If you have a medical anomaly, you're probably gonna, it's probably gonna feel like gaslighting because right. they've either never seen it, they never had to deal with it, or so, it just baffles them. So they're like, well, there's nothing I can do to help you try this. You know? Right, exactly. I mean, and there's a lot of the times that they don't know, and so mm -hmm. they're shoving that off. They're not yeah. deceiving you for their own advantage. They're just I wanting to get rid of you, right? Like Most I mean, of the time, no, they're not trying to deceive you. No, I think that when we're talking about gaslighting, and this is where I, uh, why one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about gaslighting is because I think we grossly misuse it. I think <laughs> yes. that we grossly um misuse it so i use the word grossly because it's in there but um, <laughs> it's like oh you're just gaslighting me um it's like no uh, people can deceive yeah without gaslighting well <laughs> and then there's the other thing medical gaslighting shouldn't be compared to people who are actually gaslit in abusive and or narcissistic relationships yes because it's well, a completely different type of deception i think that medical gaslighting is extremely rare extremely rare i think that mm -hmm. there are people out there that are on power trips that are doing it <laughs> specifically yeah okay um trying to deceive people for their own advantage to make fun of them or to to have power over them i tell you have a condition when you don't and then right. refer Whatever. you out because oh you know you're gonna well, i mean think these this think about yourself till okay but well but medical gaslighting let's take a look at it medical gaslighting i think really started um with the opioid epidemic of i'm prescribing you opioids so that i can make a tremendous amount of money, money right so i mean medical gaslighting is a thing yeah. when you're talking about pharmaceuticals um you get a kickback you get yep. like i mean you put people more more people on these pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. even if they don't need it because it gives you money right, right. and medical gaslighting the flip side of the opioid epidemic mm -hmm. people who legitimately need those drugs for pain management who have used them usually for years who can manage their pain without doppling into addiction or what's the word i'm looking for 
destructive behaviors. Mm -hmm. They, I think, are in turn gaslit or at least misled because when they go in legitimately wanting medication for their pain because they know what works, they know how to manage it and are told, you're just here for pills. So, you know, we're not going to give you anything narcotic and go away. You know, well, I've had okay. that happen. And it's I, like, no, you I don't would, live with my body. Why, the reason, why the would reason you that I, know better than what I would? The reason I wouldn't know. call that gaslighting is because... No, I, I yeah. wasn't saying that was. Oh, okay. I'm just saying that's the flip side. Yeah, the flip side. Of, well, of I mean, the opioid thing yeah. is that once part of a system gets abused, yeah, the other part, it, yeah, it it swings back the other way. The yeah, the other part, and now suffer. now all of a sudden the yeah. people that really need it yeah. can't get it. Right, yeah, right. Here, because addiction is one thing. Addiction doesn't necessarily. I, mean, I would say it's a separate issue completely from pain management. Right, but they get equated a lot, and that I think of anything is true about medical gaslight it's that you need to separate those two categories right just and because a, someone's looking for pain meds to legitimately treat your pain does not automatically make them an addict right so so to recap i think that medical gaslighting i mean when we're talking specifically about medical gaslighting yeah i think it is um something that either you got a, a, a sociopath that is power tripping right yeah uh, because it's got to be like over the top it's like Oh, the doctor made a mistake, and so he's trying to gaslight me. I mean, I see that a lot. Um, it's not. Um, gaslighting is, like I said, we saw a lot of it at the opioid mm -hmm. pandemic, or yeah. epidemic pandemic. Yeah. Uh, the, the opioid epidemic, um, when they were, uh, you know, shelling out oxycodone. And Oxycontin. Cotton, yeah. yeah, oxycotton, And, uh, you know, just shooting all of these meds out there to make profit. Well, that's mm -hmm. gaslighting. It's that convincing is gaslighting. you Absolutely. that you need them. Yep. Um, and and here's uh, the Tic Tac prescription, right? So you can have them, like you can just toss them back wherever you want yeah. and creating that um, overflow for profit. And I think that yes, medical gaslighting is specifically around uh, that and especially for doctors that they deceive yeah. you so that you buy a certain product that they get a kickback on and make yeah. money. I, I agree. Absolutely I agree. think that's. I think that's a better definition of medical gaslighting than what it's usually used as. By exactly people. right. Like I think I think we just we misinterpreted it. It's gross yeah. for personal profit of some sort. I'm deceiving yeah. you as yeah. a doctor. <laughs> Let's pop into um, gaslighting uh, in personal relationships. Okay. Okay. Uh, because here's another one that there's lots of people that say, oh, you're just trying to gaslight me. And I think that we're using it wrong. Right? It really I, depends on the type of relationship. Though. Well, I agree. Okay. Now, uh, it's like when I tell you something that I truly believe, right? And you say, no, it's wrong. And I just go, no, 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 blah, 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 blah. And, and it's like, I try and convince you. It's like, what are you trying to gaslight me or what? You know, it's like, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I don't say that making to me, you, dude. Making, making me trust. I know, I, I know you don't, but I'm just saying it's, we jump to this. Uh, and I think that we have a tendency as, as a society to jump to the worst conclusion on everything, right? It's like, Maybe. oh, you're lying to me. Oh, you're gaslighting. You know, it's like, whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it all goes back to what is your personal definition of gaslighting? What is your per yeah. personal definition of deception? Of, um, damn, forgot the word. Um, goes in with manipulation. Thank you. Manip um, <laughs> yeah. What are your definitions of deception, manipulation? Um, you know, a lot of, I think... You hear a lot of terms about, oh, that's a toxic relationship. That person is toxic. You know, right. you know, it's okay to cut off your toxic family members. You know, and and yeah, gaslighting does happen between family members that aren't in a personal relationship. But it depends on how you equate things. Well, and I that's think. and that's why we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. I think that again, we miss grossly <laughs> <laughs> misuse. Uh, gaslighting like I said we just do this extremist thing and it feels extreme it, and yeah. I'm not I'm not going to to poo-poo everybody's feelings no, on no, this no, no, because no. when you are in an emotion it feels extreme every time 
right? I mean, it just does. Yeah. You know, if I'm angry, I can be extremely angry, right? Yeah. If, if I'm upset, I can be extremely upset. And we tend to go to those polar opposites of you're doing this to me. Um, well, and I think a lot of people don't even realize they've been gaslit until they're out of a particular situation. Well, of course. I mean, really. I, I can take a look at my past and I mean, and it's, I can't even say that it's gaslit on purpose, right? Here's the thing. If you're dealing with a narcissist that honestly believes that they are doing the right thing and that their thing is right, is that yeah, gaslit? But, that, but are they a narcissist if they honestly believe that they're genuine yeah. and not trying to manipulate everyone around them? Well, and that's it. Here in comes, here in comes that juggling act. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about to grossly mislead or deceive someone, especially yeah. for one's, especially for one's own game. Now, yes. Now as we go, especially, I said, like, oh, okay. So there's wiggle room in there <laughs> because especially is not a, a, a definitive. It doesn't say no. to grossly mislead or deceive for one's own advantage. It doesn't just say that. Mm -mm. It just says, uh, especially. Especially. So basically we're giving some wiggle room to this whole definition. I personally think that they should just make it definitive because here's our problem with the English language is we leave so many loopholes and because we are feeling beings, we attach all of these feelings to the definitions of our words. So yeah. if I say to grossly mislead or deceive someone for one's own advantage, if we stick with that definition of this word, mm -hmm. then we have something solid to ground yeah. the rest of our basis of talking on. Well, and then you don't confuse the poor foreigners who have to come here and learn English and realize there's 50 different definitions for a single word. Right. Know? Exactly. I think I remember, I remember the one, I think from high school German class, why is there so many definitions for velocity? Right. I'm like, okay, you got a point. One, basically you don't really hear people use the term velocity, mm -hmm. except in books or, you know, but it's like, yeah, yeah. Whoever invented the English language did nobody a favor well and and again you know when we're talking about the dictionary the dictionary yeah. definition gives you general definitions really yeah it doesn't really nail down the definitions and i think that as a society we need to make a dictionary not that that says this is definitively what these words mean right well i mean i think I, to merriam webster's credit they do mm -hmm. try to do the alternate forms that's why you have you know definition mm -hmm. number one number two number three also you're seeing more of the i want to call it a legislative history of words it's not but it's the, in the same vein seeing how these words have evolved in society and colloquial use and written use over the years because right. i think they're starting to do that a little bit more so one when people have to learn these words, they understand, okay, this is why this term is being used. This is how it can be used in multiple ways. And this is where it originated from mm -hmm. and how it was used at first and how it's use evolved over time. Right. I think that also, because you go, like, go to my parents' house and grab their dictionary. They have an old Funk and Wagnalls from like the 70s. You, I'm surprised, I'd be surprised if gaslighting was even in there. Right. But, there probably is a definition of manipulation or deceit or misleading or something to that effect that would have something in that same vein. Now, these days, Merriam-Webster's definition is probably different mm -hmm. than it was in the 70s. But it doesn't mean that people are going to change their personal definition of those words as time well, evolves. I, I agree. And I mean, the, the show, this show is about people to understand what definitions that they do have so that right. they can communicate correctly to right. other people. Because well, and also if not, I see, go ahead. <laughs> I'm also not telling people that they're wrong for using a word a certain way if it works for them. Well, that's, I agree. Really? But again, part of our, part of our problem as a society is that we don't communicate well. We don't understand each other because we don't understand yeah. your definition of what that word means. That's true. That's right. True. It is imperatively important that if we are trying to really communicate with other people, we have some really good definitions that we can lean in on, right? This mm -hmm. is what this show is about yeah. in order to be able to get you to understand that there is more to this than what you thought around language. Yeah. 
and that being able to communicate with your wife, your husband, your, your friends, your partners, your people at work, you have to understand that everybody's got their own idea of a definition Absolutely. of a work. And then you have to define it. So when we're defining a word like gaslighting, we go to grossly mislead or deceive, especially, no, I'm gonna take especially out of there. I'm gonna yeah. swipe it right out of there yep. for this definition to grossly mislead or deceive for one's own advantage. I mm -hmm. think that that's definitive enough yeah. when we go into relationships and we take a look at it, even though that uh, say a narcissist who truly believes that they are the center of the universe and everybody should, should wobble around them and they convince yeah. you of that or they convince you that you are lesser than and so should stay in your place, all of that yeah. stuff. I think that that's still gaslighting even Absolutely. though they sincerely believe it. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, if you look up, I think, the definition definition of narcissism, I don't think, I'm not sure if it makes that distinction between they actually believe what they're saying and doing, or, are, or if they're purposefully trying to deceive well, and, or pigeonhole someone into a belief that maybe they don't believe themselves, but it works to their own advantage. Right. And, and I mean, that's that's where we get into the minutia of gaslighting. Yeah. It's like I, I could convince you that your left toe is bigger than your right toe, even though it's not. Right. If one now, of my what legs if, is longer than the other. The other so ones, right? uh, it's very likely. <laughs> but what what advantage is that to me? Right. Um, but if I convince you that you need to give me three quarters of your money, um, for us to move forward as a couple, right? Didn't and then I that? I proceed to spend it all on stuff that I want, <laughs> right? Um, there is me deceiving you for my own advantage in some way or another. Whether well, yeah, I mean, and that's, or that's a segue into an abusive relationship. You right. get together, oh, I need a third of your money, blah, blah, blah. And then I spend it and you don't have anything to fall back on. Therefore, you're stuck. Yeah. You can't well, tell me that's not a narcissist well, essentially working up to I, gaslighting somebody. I, I think that, that it is gaslighting. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think that, that those things, anything that I convince you to do that is for my advantage, that is detrimental to you, I think that we've got to make that a caveat to this, to grossly mislead or deceive for one's own advantage that disadvantages the person that is being gaslit. Yes. Okay. And I think that that's where we, we miss it. It's got to be a disadvantage to you and a massive yeah. advantage to me. Yeah. Right. So instead Even if of it's leveling, just an emotional disadvantage. Right. You know, maybe you feel whatever they say makes you feel more depressed. So therefore you're a little bit more sensitive. Maybe you're more likely to, you know, not right. say anything when someone says something that, you know, probably isn't right. Well, and I mean, I so when we're talking about that, we, we can go into uh, abusive relationships. I don't think that we don't gaslight in our regular relationships either, at least to a small degree. I would say um, the whole idea that, you know, almost any situation can arise in any relationship, that the chance yeah. that you haven't gas gaslit your partner at some point is probably false. Right. I agree. Even if I, it's even if it's over something like super stupid, like I want to see this movie. They don't like, you know, yeah. comic book movies or whatever. But we're gonna go anyways, and I'm gonna make them do it by, you know, right. Well, some but, form of detrimental deception. It's like, well, yeah. And, and I know again, that's a stretch, but deception in relationship is it gaslighting? Um, when you're lying to somebody, is it gaslighting? Because really, you're lying to somebody for your own advantage, aren't you? Yeah. Um, if I say I'm deceiving you, uh, say, okay, um, I'm an avid disc golfer <laughs> and say, I went out one day and I was an hour late home and I told you it was because it was bad traffic, but I had actually stopped and, and had a round of disc golf, right? So I'm specifically deceiving you so that I don't get your ire or backlash I in order to be able to I think you tried to do that day. once, if I remember yeah. right. You said you were in traffic and then later you go, yeah, I stopped and played around. And I'm like, <laughs> like I wouldn't just assume that's what you were doing, you know? Well, and it, it's, One, I, 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 know may how, well, I, I may well have done that. 
Yeah. Like, well, and, and traffic is horrid, but I'd rather you just be honest, you mm-hmm. know, even if I'm pissed off that you didn't well, come I mean, home right away or whatever. I, mean, I agree. Whatever. But when we're I'll talking about gaslighting, well, gaslighting is, would that be gaslighting? I don't know if that, I think that so. kind of deception would be gaslighting. Unless it's a, a bunch of deceptions that add up to a huge advantage to me. Well, there is that. That make you think something of me that isn't true. Uh, but uh, let's, let's, hold on. Let, I, just something occurred to me. Um, how about if, if uh, the, somebody was having an extramarital affair, right? They are trying to deceive their partner mm-hmm. into thinking that they're not doing that. Yeah. So all of the excuses that I'm home late or mm-hmm. I've, got, I, I've got a business trip or whatever that is that they do in order to be able to make that function to get the other person deceived... Also, the number one is tell for that usually is accusing the other partner of being unfaithful. Well, I agree. I, agree. So I think that that's edge. gaslighting. Yeah. I think that's gaslighting. Yeah. I think that that kind of, I think that when we're yeah. looking at relationship, gaslighting could be gross deception mm-hmm. because that's a number of lies that have to be told well, as back- opposed to I fibbed, I didn't break your favorite vase. Um, it just, I, I don't know how it happened, right? right? That's an advantage of me not getting into trouble, but I'm talking about a big advantage over a long period of time. Right. But again, back to the line about disc golf, mm-hmm. I would be asking, why did you feel you needed to lie in the first place? Because I didn't want to get into trouble, but, uh, that's, that's an easy one. Trouble? I didn't want to face anybody's what, I'm wrath. I'm going to spank you when you get home because well, you're no, no, a no, bad I, boy. You and I both know. Like that, <laughs> that a lot of the times we as a society have been raised to abuse people that aren't doing what we think that they should be doing. Okay. And yeah. that abuse comes in disdain, abstention from sex. Uh, there's a whole bunch of punishments that happen in that thing that one of the reasons why people lie so much is because there's so many punishments there. Okay. I think abst- abstention from sex is probably the one people shouldn't be using because well, I, I don't think that any of it should be using well but I, I agree not, i agree but at the same time species, really. there's something to be said for when you're pissed off and you you know well i mean there's there's something to be said to venting one's anger i get it yeah i, I well understand. i mean are getting that release through gratuitous sex right. versus versus yelling at each other welcome you know, to do you want to have an hour-long screaming match or do you want to go for 25 yeah. minutes when we're talking about uh, the avoidance of getting into trouble right okay? and when we talk about getting into trouble that's uh being punished abused uh all of those things that we do normally that everybody says oh that's not abuse um you know it it, it totally is yeah but or we trained were trained to react that way as kids exactly we're, the last thing you want to do is get your parental units angry at you exactly and i mean you know, so you lie I'm not, you hide you whatever, i'm not and then you cry you know? i am not uh, telling everybody that the things that they are doing are wrong. It's it's not something. It's something sure? that we should, as a species, grow out of the punishment of everybody around us for not conforming to what we think that they should be doing. I think that that it should be removed from our society, but it's a part of it. So right. when we're talking about gaslighting, I'm talking about something that's huge. So I think that if you uh, if somebody had an extramarital affair and they were covering it up and lying mm-hmm. so much, right. what they're doing is exactly that. They're grossly yep. misleading or deceiving somebody for their own advantage. Yep. And that is grossly misleading. Yes. Uh, a lie, if if I lied about disc golf and you never found out about it, right? One little Big lie. Whoop. Um, it's it's not necessarily I don't I, I agree with you. I don't I think that as a society we should stop doing that. But if it's one little lie, it's not gaslighting. If no. it's, it is a, a huge group of lies in a relationship, yeah. whether that's somebody trying to dominate you and convincing you that you are smaller, or if it's somebody uh, grossly deceiving you like an extramarital uh, affair, then yes, absolutely, that's gaslighting. Or if it's in a pattern of behavior. Like right. if you're constantly saying, telling the same lie. Well, I, reinforcement. Even if, right? yeah, reinforce. I mean, even if it's something small, it's like, well, why do you? Okay, you did it once, big deal. Did it twice, uh, okay. But you keep doing it. It's like, 
Why? Well, I I don't. What's the need behind? I doing I that? agree, but I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't categorize it as gaslighting. No, I I, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I, I'm just saying. Yeah, no, no, I know. I'd, I'm just saying I, that that could be a stretch, I guess. Right. You know. But again, it, so what are we calling gaslighting in relationship? I this is the way that I think we should be defining it. We should be defining it as like, a, and we're going to use that grossly word again here to <laughs> grossly mislead. So if yeah. you are being grossly misled in your relationship, right? It would be sort of like, uh, and this is just a complete absurd example, but it would be if I was grossly misleading you to think, to say that you have no sense of smell, right? <laughs> you have no sense of smell. It's like your sense of smell is way off, right? <laughs> you, you're saying, oh, it smells like roses. Are you kidding? That smells like shit. What, what's wrong with your nose, right? Uh, excuse my language. But it, that smells horrible. What are you talking about? And me convincing you that your smell is off. That's grossly misleading. To my own advantage, right? Um, Just to mess with uh, you. But that can also be a sign of a medical condition. Oh, so. no, no, I agree. But yeah. it, it's like I'm, I'm saying. But yeah. you know what I mean. I'm trying to use yeah. a, an example that's gross, right? Like huge. Um, so I think that uh, in regards to medical gaslighting... We, I think we've we've nailed that yeah. um, as what that is. And uh, I think that personal, like in relational gaslighting, I think that we've defined that actually because it's when we're talking about personal gaslighting, mm -hmm. it's something that's big. It's huge. It's a, it's a group of lying yeah. that is meant to deceive uh, the partner in the relationship or a, one of the partners in the relationship. Right. It would be but like I, I, I've uh, I've bought a car and I've hidden it from you and you'll never be able to see it. Okay. Right? Like it's in, at, parked at a different garage. I go and see it every day, but you you don't get to see it, so I'm deceiving you of where I'm going. Right. Well, and I think a lot of also where the term has been used, especially during the last you know couple of years, um, has been politically right. and in the media. A lot of mm -hmm. people feel like they're being gaslit by the nightly news, you know, fake news and all that crap. And maybe, maybe Well, not. okay. Well, and again, we, we go into the definition of being grossly deceived for one's own advantage. Well, you've got to remember that the news outlets uh, are going to run the stories that make the numbers yeah. for them so that they get more money. I mean, it's when money uh, gross amounts of money yeah. are involved i love how i'm using gross the whole time i'm, I'm in this thing um but if if we use tons if we've got tons of money on the line you can mm -hmm. best bet there's going to be gaslit stuff well, going on there and you saw this happening about 20 years ago when the media conglomerate conglomerates started buying up the independent radio stations and the yes. local news stations like you watch the news and I'll use an example. We watch the news in Seattle, and you know it'll say a Clear Con or Sinclair Channel or whatever company that is now that owns Channel Four, you know. And that can, you look it up, and the company probably owns a bulk of local news stations across the country. So yeah, they are gonna gear the news in a certain direction. Well, of course they're gonna they're going to gear it to where they make more money. Yeah. Um, and, and we know that. Now, let's talk about how the media gaslights us. And I'm talking the media gaslights us constantly. Now, I'm going to go back to... The I, I, would say, I would say everything except PBS probably gaslights us constantly. I think, yeah. I think that... Uh, let's go back to... I believe it's the 1930s. Might be the 1940s. Uh, when... I think it was 1930s was just after the, the First World War-ish, the 1920s and 30s, where uh, cinema was becoming a thing, mm -hmm. okay? People were, were doing cinema. Well, for those people that don't know it, um, engagement rings were not a thing. Uh, before, right. the, engagement right. rings were not a thing. We didn't do engagement rings. We didn't do diamonds are a, man, are a man's uh, worst enemy and a girl's best friend. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> that you know we didn't have any of that and what happened was De Beers a huge diamond conglomerate and actually they are a monopoly if anybody cares to go research them uh, they're pretty much a monopoly in the diamond field De Beers 
struck a deal with the some of the big like at MGM and some of the big theater companies uh, to be able to put engagement rings like have a ring that they get engaged to uh, in their movies and all of a sudden diamond sales went up that's gaslighting guys yeah. that's being gaslit that is us being gaslit all the time uh, and I think that uh, advertising does it the most. Yes, and, and I was just going to say the biggest one was in the, was it 50, 40s, 50s, 60s with the doctors doing the cigarette commercials? Oh, right, right, right. Um, and, they're, and they're gaslighting you into buying and doing cigarettes. Yeah. Again, uh, any advertising, really, when we take a yeah. look at it, oh, yeah. is... Well, is <laughs> Gaslighting, it's to I mean, convince look, you of something at, for our look, own advantage. Look at when we were growing up in the 80s when the Happy Meal came out and all the little, you know, McDonald's started doing the, like, collectible toys, you know, like Super Mario Brothers and mm -hmm. stuff in the Happy Meals. So, of course, parents are going to, bad or kids are going to badger their parents. We got to go collect these. These are so cool. I love Super Mario, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, you know. I mean, it's a great marketing tool to sell more products right. yeah the kids stuff is the cheapest stuff you can buy there but at the same time once you get the kids they're going to come back because well, okay. kids will ding their parents until their parents can't deal anymore so gaslighting I, i'm just i'm looking at the de beers thing and it's like de beers basically convinced us that diamond are, diamonds are a girl's best friend and you should buy a diamond for your wife if you're going to, or your future wife, to show her that you care and love her about her. Yeah, um, still waiting. That, that was a, 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 a gross misconception. It was a deception of sorts, but they were starting a trend, really. Yeah. It wasn't really yeah. harmful to you other than the fact that it was harmful to your pocketbook. <laughs> um, There's that. But it wasn't, they weren't trying to do something to your own detriment like we're talking about so no but what, but well what? Uh, okay i'm gonna take umbrage with that right because yes it was a small thing however many decades ago mm -hmm. that has now grown into the very industry that you work in of course you know you you're a wedding dj you see the result of you know the end product of the engagement you know right. the big wedding party and how much money is thrown at these things yes well and i agree would that and, have happened if de beers hadn't done what they'd done um we don't know um and the truth is i just i look at and i just go okay companies want to make as much money as they can mm -hmm. i think that that's not gaslighting actually I, when i take a look at it i'm going to take retract my statement i don't think that what de beers did is gaslighting i think what the cigarette companies did was yes absolutely um, I think that the cigarette companies said, like the research was saying, hey, this is really, really bad for your health. And the cigarette companies suppressing all of that, that's gaslighting and fighting the battles and trying to convince everybody that it was fine. Right. Yeah. Um, that's gaslighting. I think that. But again, same argument you can make for the opioids. One, people have a choice. Mm -hmm. If they want to smoke, you know, go do it. Whatever. Right. It's your life. The. Um, like them getting rid of menthol cigarettes mm -hmm. you know well you know now people vape and they use all these flavors and we can't make it attractive to kids and stuff it's like if kids want to smoke they're going to find a way to smoke well I you agree. know they were doing it when I was in high school and you know they didn't have all the fancy vape flavors the, the, they didn't have vapes back then you the know truth is, kids still is smoke. should smoking be illegal right I I, there, there's all of that, but what, what I'm well, talking, what I'm talking about, I don't, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, really, because okay. I, I do want to make two sure. comments related to that. One, we do know that secondhand smoke is a killer. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you're going to ban freaking cigarettes or put those stupid disclaimers at the start of vape commercials, which I see seen in the states, which is just stupid, but not do those same type of disclaimers in front of alcohol commercials why are cigarettes vilified when alcohol is allowed to continue being this cool thing let's all go get hammered and watch football you know i mean alcohol is just as poisonous if not more so 
Right. I just don't think it's fair that you can you, that society has singled out one but not the other. Right. Well, okay. I mean, okay, that fairness of society besides, like, I mean, like I said, I didn't want to dive down that rabbit hole no, because no, it's just but, a, that's just an opinion, right? No, I know uh, it's an opinion, but still, they're right? both poisons. I mean, right. really. So. We know that the cigarette companies grossly misled us and mm -hmm. deceived us about certain things. We yep. also suspect that uh, oil companies are doing the same thing. Oh, no shit. Right? Um, because a lot of their extraction methods are really, really bad for the environment. And, you know, 30, 40, 50 years down the road, we're going to see those effects that are happening right now. But um, also seeing the rise in bottled water. Right. Bottled water is not a water product. It's a petroleum product. Right. So you think the oil companies want people to, you know, turn well, on the tap and not buy bottled water? No, they don't. Well, it's because no, the bottles are made of petroleum, right? Um, yeah, that's just what I said. Yeah. Well, no, no, that that sounded like the water was petroleum based. No. Um, I know. No. I know. No, and also not just the bottles are made of petroleum. There's the transportation of those bottles. Right. And the the carbon footprint i guess around that compared to just turning right. on the tap well and and we can take a look at what we agree is uh, climate scientists talking about the climate change and how we affect it right. um and the the oil companies and stuff like that really fighting against it you know because they would have to change their industry completely spend billions of dollars they would lose billions in profit uh in order for to to fight us changing our ways so that we could better our lives for ourselves. Yeah, I think Frontline... I think that that's gaslight. I think Frontline did a thing on, what was it? I want to say ExxonMobil. And back in the 70s, they actually employed climate scientists. They knew what they were doing to the environment. Right. And once and I mean, they realized that, what they were doing, they fired them all and buried the research. Right, and that's gaslighting. Yes. That is definitely gaslighting. Yeah. That is a giant corporation deceiving us for their own profit to gaslight us to say that we don't, we've got, there's, there's no problem. What are you talking about? Look, our scientists say that this is fine. It's right? the same. You could equate it to rich people who don't pay any taxes or corporations who have so many lawyers that they know all the tax loose loopholes so they don't have to pay taxes. Exactly. You know. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of deception going on about there. And and I do I think that some of the conspiracy theories may be correct? Absolutely. Right? But again, remember that gaslighting can go both sides. There's Absolutely. lots of people out there that make money off the conspiracy <laughs> theories that want you to believe them and yeah. buy their products and yeah. do their things so yeah. that they make more money. So they create conspiracy theories that aim it towards what they want you to believe. So there's gaslighting in both directions. I think in summation that we should redefine this word and take out the especially, let's take out yep. the wiggle room here, yep. go to, to grossly mislead or deceive for one's own profit to the disadvantage of others. I think that that would be the best way we can describe yep. this word. And Take I think, note, Merriam-Webster. Exactly. Well, and I think that this is the best way that we can personally use this word. Then we're not misusing it right. all over the place. Right. All right. I think that's the show. I think I that think so. we've got it. We've nailed it. Yep. That was great. That was awesome. All right. Thank you, Talia, my wonderful wife. And thank all the viewers out there. I will see you next time on The Aspiring Master. Mm -hmm.